Hey guys, welcome. Today we'll be talking about post-stroke spasticity management. Here's a sneak peek of what we are going to talk about today. If you're interested, do watch the video fully. So what is the issue that the patient with spasticity will have? Usually, there will be some weaknesses in the upper limb or lower limb where there's spasticity. There will also be a loss of coordination in the upper or lower limbs in the gross motor and also the fine motor movements. There also will be some shortening of muscle length in the future which can lead to contractures. And lastly, there will be pain. Not all cases of spasticity have to be treated because in some cases, spasticity can be actually helping the client or the patient. For example, if there is spasticity in the lower limb, usually if the limb is weak, the patient or client will, may be using the spasticity element to help them in the walking. By treating the spasticity in this case, further problems such as knee buckling may happen. So with all cases, a proper assessment is required before starting treatment. So now we'll be going through some examples of when to treat. So before treating, it'll be good to understand whether the client or patient is an active individual or a passive individual. So for active individual, usually they will be able to do ADLs fairly independently or with some minimal assistance and spasticity will be affecting their daily functional movements. So things like pain from spasms or even spasticity that has the potential to cause injury such as when walking, if they have spasticity in the ankles, they may have a fall because of the spasticity affecting during their walking. Next for a passive individual, this type of individuals after stroke will need a lot of help from the caregivers for daily activities such as transfers, uh, care for hygiene and also bed mobility. So for this group of individuals, uh, spasticity will be affecting their care, they may be having some pain and spasticity may actually result in high risk of contracture development. Um, they will also be having a high burden of care for the caregivers. And lastly, if it's affecting their posture in sitting or in supine, then these are the reasons why you want to treat spasticity for an individual who is largely passive. Also, before starting any treatment, it will be good to consider if there's any noxious stimulus present that is aggravating the spasticity. For example, if there's some injury or some ulcers that is being infected, um, these are this may be causing noxious stimulus for the patient which can be increasing the spasticity to be more prominent or painful for them. Hence, removing this or addressing these causes will bring down the spasticity. Okay, so for the treatment options for spasticity, there is a non-pharmacological and the pharmacological methods. Usually, a combination of both of these is required for the treatment to be effective. For non-pharmacological methods, we have a few. Firstly, will be stretching. This is the most common and most popular method out there. Stretching, however, needs to be prolonged and cannot be done for short durations. Um, so the point is that you have to stretch for a longer period by things like weight bearing, using of splints or serial casting. Then stretching will be effective. And if you can combine stretching such as active stretching in weight bearing along with strengthening exercises for the upper or lower limb, that will be effective. Strengthening exercises in the past has been said to increase spasticity, but over the past decade, there have been evidence suggesting that this is not the case. Hence, strengthening exercises in the form of functional activity is actually recommended for spasticity. Next, we have splinting and serial casting. This go hand in hand with the stretching element whereby they put the limb or the joint in a and lengthen position to keep it stretched for long periods of time. This will actually help in reducing the chance of contracture and in the case of serial casting to reduce the contracture from getting worse or even correcting the contracture to a certain extent. Lastly, we have NMES. Uh, NMES is also a form of strengthening exercise and this when combined with the use of Botox injections um, will be very helpful to reduce the spasticity. For a lot of patients who have very weak upper or lower limbs, NMES is a good way to start strengthening. Okay, for pharmacological options, I'll be talking about the mainly commonly used ones. First, we have oral medications. Oral medications such as baclofen, uh, these medications have effect on the generalized part of the body, meaning they cannot be targeted to a certain upper limb or lower limb. 
and most of the time this is used because of the cost effectiveness and it can achieve some reduction in spasticity however the downside is that there will be side effects and the more medications you take orally the increasing of the drowsiness or sedative effects will be more prominent hence that's the downside of oral medications next we have the more common and famous one which is the botox injections botox injections are very targeted can be targeted at multiple joints and their biggest advantage over medications is that they don't have uh, side effects such as drowsiness or sedation and when used alongside with NMES or serial casting this effectiveness is actually quite good for Botox injections however Botox is not cheap and there may be some chances of injuries happening when the injection is uh, being administered next we have the intrathecal baclofen therapy or pump um, this is basically uh, inserting a pump and a catheter into the spinal fluid area whereby it delivers baclofen directly to the spinal fluid area and this actually reduces the spasticity. It can be adjusted, the dose, and it is better than oral medications in the sense that there is a less dose required as compared to oral medications because in oral medications most of the medication can be metabolized once uh, inside the body but for intrathecal baclofen since it's delivered directly the effects may be more greater with lesser doses of medication however this involves a surgery here's a summary of all the interventions that we have explained today in the video I've also included the MAS or the Modified Azure Scale score for which of these interventions will be useful for. Thank you for watching till the end. Do subscribe and like the video if you found it useful.